Well, today we remember another fight for freedom. 79 years ago, Americans landed on the beaches of Normandy. There are fewer and fewer men left from the greatest generation to remember D-Day. One of those brave men lives in Rotterdam. He sat down with News 10 to recount what happened that fateful day. The whole D-Day operation was a brutal atmosphere. It was, I can't explain it, it was terrible. The 6th of June, 1944, is a day Julius Borealli doesn't reminisce about too often. Believe me when I tell you, I was scared. I was really scared. Enlisted with the Coast Guard on the LST-27, Borealli was the baker on board. I baked pies and cakes and pastries. A menu, along with memories, remain well-preserved. Julius Borealli, ship's cook, second class, how cabins. The keepsakes document the history that would unfold. This is D-Day uh, on, on the beach. The Admiral wrote a message, told us that we we're going to on a grand mission. A piece of paper that was supposed to be burned before sailing so the Germans would never see it. Well, there was nobody around. <laughs> so I ripped it off and I put it in my sea bag. Dated May 27th, 1944. The coming battle differs from that we have undertaken before. It demands more seamanship and strong currents. The landing ship tank designed to carry cargo, supplies, troops, and a 22-year-old Borealli crossed the English Channel, headed for Normandy. While we were crossing, a priest came out and got us all up on a tank deck and gave us all a benediction and wishing us good Godspeed. 79 years later, Borealli remembers it like it was yesterday. We left at 9 o'clock at night. When we got there, it was about uh, just get daybreak. And all of a sudden. Airplanes were bombing us. He went from baker to fighter. I didn't do any more cooking. I was either on a gun, shooting at airplanes, and uh, going out, picking up the wounded on beachhead. The atmosphere, it was, I can't explain it, it was terrible. There was thousands of men laying all over the beach. It was a bloodshed. The dangerous duty detailed in his diary. And then off to the right of the beach was the, was the cliffs. Army guys were trying to climb up the ladder. German artillery, the 88 was the most feared gun that the Germans had. And they kept firing at them. And they were shooting, as long as you could hear the whistle. When the shell was being flying through the air, it whistled. The minute it stopped, that's what exploded. And they had shrapnel go all over. There's where most of the people got killed or wounded. As thousands were rescued, Borealli found one of the wounded from his hometown. I think about that guy I picked up. You know, he recognized me. Who? He was all sand and rubble and all blood. And he, he recognized says, Julie. That comes to my mind so many times. There was also his own close call. We were out of sand dune. We couldn't get off of it. They had another LST come around us. Well, I was on a forward gun at the time. The whole ship went up in the air. That's 300 foot long. It hit a mine. If we would got off that sand, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. Do you want to read some of the entries, Dad? Borealli, now 100, is a survivor and a witness to history, events and experiences he shares with his daughter, Judy. And it's not a story, it's real. Thinking of what my father went through and what he saw and what remains in his, his memory is just pretty sad, you know, that they, that they went through that. You forget about courage. Fear had already set in. So you just accepted it. The Nazis wanted to dominate the world, you know, and we didn't believe in it, you know. So that gave us a lot of, hey, let's get out of, let's fight them. 
that bravery on the beach changing the tides of war. Once Normandy was secured, Boreali found something unexpected in wartime. He was my best buddy on the ship. Friendship, even among strangers, who made him lunch to thank Americans. Two eggs, home fries, tea and crumpets, but no sugar to crumpets. They didn't have no sugar there. Made my day, made my whole war. It made me feel good. Endearing kindness and the world's generosity stronger than the worst of war. An outlook leading to a lifetime of milestones. Well, she was a good looking woman. Including a marriage of 69 years, three kids, and generations grateful for the greatest generation. And it's important to know where their great grandfather and grandfather was and what led to our country remaining a free country because of what these young people did in World War II. I'm no hero. <laughs> The hill is all buried over there, yeah, yeah. I did my job and I tried to do it the best I could. Just mm. an incredible story, man. Trisha. And he remembers everything with such clarity. Uh, Mr. Borealli completed 111 crossings uh, with the Coast Guard, bringing back supplies to help with the war effort. When he came back to the U.S. in 1945, once he was honorably, honorably discharged, he went to work for American Locomotive. He was on the assembly line making Army tanks for the Korean War. An amazing man. We hit this day every year, and I just can't imagine to hear Julius recount all that, what those young men saw. You yeah. Know, on, going up onto the shores there. And and he said it, you hear it in his voice, yeah, he, he was did. scared. Of course. Um, so, but it's important to remember, and we thank Mr. Borealli for sharing his story.